Greetings, I'm Solo to Scully, and welcome back to Devil May Cry, where we have my favorite level in the game, Deep Darkness, and Towering Inferno, or whatever it was. I kind of forgot to read the last little thing that was there, but whatever. Uh, this is my favorite level in the game for one reason only. The music. Because uh, you're not going to be hearing it over my waffling commentary, but uh, the music to Deep Darkness is, well... It, let's just say it's incredibly atmospheric. I'm, I might even potentially change up the ending title card just to sort of reflect that, but... Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you probably can't hear it over the crackling fire, my waffling comments already notwithstanding, and, uh... Whatever, you'll hear a little bit of it, but... I don't know. I just really love this music, and, uh, you know, it just, it just sort of takes setting the right atmosphere to... Hmm, bellissimo. Yeah, this is all related to a secret mission, by the way, the Dance of the Bloodthirsty Dead. It's uh, basically another kill X amount of shadows, sugar me do, whatever, but yeah. That's basically what the scratches are there to indicate the dance of the bloodthirsty dead, sacrificial rituals, whatever's your poison. Anyway, we basically need to continue our missions of getting the shields to unlock our way into the Colosseum, and in turn, well, yeah, further explorations and uh, unlock the Iron Gate. Which I suppose, you know, as we're continuing our exploration through dark macabre corridors, it does once again bring me to Devil May Cry's, uh, gameplay structure, which I did- I did kind of hint about it in the, you know, all the way back in part one, but... I mean, it needs to be said about how much of, uh, Resident Evil's DNA was in, uh, Devil May Cry 1, and much to its benefit, I think, because... A lot of later games in the series, uh, you know, especially by the time we get to games like, uh, you know, 3 onwards... Yeah, the games would start to focus less and less on the uh, exploration and puzzle aspects, and a little bit more on, you know, just uh, basic combat, which isn't a bad thing, mind you. The combat of those games is very refined, but... I don't know, when it comes to uh, how Devil May Cry balances everything, I feel like it has a better balance between, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of these lateral puzzles, exploration, building up the atmosphere first and foremost, and... You know, also combining that with the whole, you know... Extreme 2000s-ish style with, you know, all the rock and industrial music and all that kind of thing. I don't know, it, it just hits a nice balance for me that it just really makes Devil May Cry 1 a great overall experience. Whereas when it comes to games like, you know, Devil May Cry 3 onwards, I only ever really go back to those games if, you know, there's a certain boss fight that I like, or, you know, if I just happen to feel in the mood. But games like Devil May Cry 1 and, uh, to some extent, 2, I can sort of go back to any time, because I know that I'm going to enjoy, you know, a full course meal, as opposed to just sort of, well, having a tasty snack of a boss fight, or, you know, just picking levels here and there, if that makes any sense. So, that isn't to disparage later games, mind you, because, I mean, even despite my, you know, grouches and grouses about Devil May Cry 3 as a game, I do still quite enjoy the rest of the Devil May Cry series, you know, reboot included, so... Yeah, it's really just a factor that, I mean, this game's structure balances everything quite well, and it's the sort of game that I just, you know, I love experiencing over and over again. It is fucking immaculate, and... <clears throat> quite frankly, I feel like Devil May Cry 1 deserves a little bit more of an accolade than, in fact, it really gets in recent years. I know a lot of people will still tout 3 as the, uh, the de facto best game, but... I don't know. I feel that 3, apart from just sort of treading water with a lot of elements the first game did far better, I just feel like Devil May Cry 1 just really balances everything together despite not uh, being as uh, refined as some of the other later games in the series in terms of combat. Yeah, but I mean, all the same. That's just the nature of, uh, evolution, I suppose. But anyway, that's about all we really have to explore behind the waterfall, getting holy water. So does that mean that if Dante hid within the waterfall, I, that I guess was blessed by a priest that everybody would die, or maybe the holy water was just hidden there because somebody was a fool. Anyway, another shadow battle. Yeah, to kind of uh, talk about difficulties for a second, uh, and I'm only really recalling this in my Dante Must Die mode playthrough, I don't know if the enemies uh, shift, depending on when you leave and exit this place or come back or whatever. Uh, kind of similar to what happens in the, the main hall of the uh, castle of Malay Island, where sometimes you get a uh, death scissors, or other times you get a, uh, you know, just regular marionettes and puppets. But yeah, uh, basically you can also get, um, uh, death size, I believe, so, uh, yeah, pick your poison. Sort of like being asked to get shot in the left or the right long. Yeah, by the way, part of the reason why you need to shoot the shadows, and I know I'm late in saying this, is that, uh, if you hit them with, uh, you know, your sword or with Ifrit, 
Well, yeah, basically that drains your health. So, don't do that. Although it does kind of give the implication as to what the Shadows uh, initially were. They're more used to fighting knights and, uh, you know, swordsmen as opposed to people with weapons, so... I guess biologically speaking, they weren't really, you know, evolved enough to adapt to what firearms were, so... In the end, that's part of the reason why firearms hurt them and, uh, you know, I suppose ranged weapons and lightning also hurts them. And, uh, that's, that's why we pretty much just gotta give them all this. And yeah, let it be known though, despite how powerful Dante can be, yeah, shadows are not to be messed with. Part of, <laughs> part of my disparaging remark earlier on where I said, thank goodness you got to control uh, the shadows as V in Devil May Cry 5. God, it was so cathartic to lay the smack down on enemies using their abilities. But I mean, I guess while we're still on Devil May Cry's topics, uh, again, I've heard from a lot of people actually that they didn't really enjoy V's playstyle that much, which... You know, I mean, depending on whether or not we actually do get a Devil May Cry 6, or anything with the series apart from uh, the, well, at the time, what's meant to be coming out this year, the, um, uh, the streaming TV series of Devil May Cry. Yeah. Uh, I would really like to see a more refined version of V's playstyle. I mean, not necessarily with V himself, given, you know, <laughs> spoilery, spoilery things, but uh, the only thing that I'll really say is a hint towards what goes on in that game. Think of the nobodies of characters. I nearly spoiled it there. But yeah, a lot of people apparently didn't really like it all that much, so that probably means that we're not going to see it again, which is quite saddening, really, because, I mean, as much as, much as I love Dante and uh, Nero's playstyle, although the fact that we're not going to be playing as Dante in future games is probably a thing, well, uh, probably going to be reserved for DLC, kind of similar to how they incorporated Virgil into 4 and 5. Uh, but yeah, the main point being is that... Uh, yeah, probably not going to see V's playstyle return, which is a shame, because it was quite unique and uh, quite fun for me, actually. It was probably my second favourite character to play as in the game. Uh, but regardless, though, I suppose as we continue to make our way backwards towards uh, the Colosseum, so we can acquire the Wheel of Destiny! Yeah, the Devil May Cry uh, Netflix series that's apparently meant to be coming out this year, even though we've heard fuck all about it. I mean, it was projected for a 2024 release date, uh, apparently not having Ruben Langdon as the voice, although it's probably more due to, like, social media political reasons that, you know, a lot of people have taken a bit of umbrage with <laughs> in terms of his character, so it's likely we either might be getting a completely new voice cast, or some people might be returning while others won't. Again, I really don't know what to say, like, it's, uh, it's, it's done by the same guy who did the Castlevania series, which, you know, not really too sure how that panned out, because, uh, if, again, I haven't actually seen the Castlevania series that, uh, you know, uh, I forgot what the guy's name was, it was uh, Adi Shankar, I think, was responsible for, but, yeah, he's pretty much gonna be the one, you know, behind the wheelhouse of the Devil May Cry thing, and really how that's gonna turn out is anybody's guess. I mean, it's apparently involving Dante, so where in the timeline it takes place, who fucking knows, so... I don't know, I mean, is it gonna be adapting, like, the, the games from, like, uh, th uh, 3 or whatever? Is it gonna be its own universe kind of thing, or...? whatever, because I mean, uh, from what I recall, Adi Shankar did do his own little thing, like, uh, you know, particularly with uh, Punisher Dirty Laundry, which was basically an unofficial pseudo short film sequel to the 2004 Punisher that had Thomas Jane return for the role, so, yeah, really, I'm not really too sure. Maybe if I did see the Castlevania TV series, it would give me an idea, but I thought that was more so meant to be just an Abbott adaptation of a, a Castlevania 3 and a, a Rondo of Blood or... A, yeah, it would have been Rondo of Blood, because, uh, you know, nobody adapts Castlevania Bloodlines. The good, favourite Castlevania game of mine, but, like, wished. Anyway, the point is, is that we've heard hot, neither hide nor hair of this, so it's either going to be silently cancelled, pushed back, or, well, who knows, really. And, I mean, I can't even fathom really why they're so slow on the project, because, I mean, Devil May Cry 5 was a very popular game. The series itself is still in very good graces with a lot of fans, so... Ultimately, I'm still having to wonder here, like, I mean, Devil May Cry is... Well, again, it's been a couple of years since 2019 when 5 was released, so, I mean, the series is still technically, quote-unquote, back, so... I'm not really too sure what the delay is. I mean, it's not, like the, 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 it's not like the proposed Devil May Cry reboot movie, which, you know, was in development, but then was canned when the reception to that game came out, so... I don't know, I'm not really... <sighs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, herbs! They have grown to monstrous size during some kind of miasma. Oh, man. 
everyone from Chris, Jill, Barry, Rebecca, Lee Hung, Claire, and everyone in between, they're just going, No, Mr. Dante, no, don't abandon the herbs, we need that for health. Although, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. And we got a C rank, because I suck. Although, then again, that was likely due to the damage I took from the shadows, but, uh... Ah, quest. Anyway, as we press onward to new adventures, yeah, we're now gonna be getting into the secret mission. Uh, which does actually require you to sort of, uh, go back to the way you came, all the way back down to the first area you started in with Deep Darkness, so... Uh, kind of editing that down for time, so... Yeah, don't really have to worry about that too much, so, uh... Teleporting? And now we are back with the great music. Ah, oh, I'm there. In any case though, now it is time to dance the dance of the bloodthirsty dead. Ah, treasure of the Reaper. Let us begin. So yeah, like I mentioned beforehand, this is basically another kill the shadows sugar me do, just with a very tight corridor landscape, so... Yeah, grenade launcher at the ready, and, uh, just make sure you're ready to kick some ass. Style ranking is meaningless at this stage, given the fact that we're facing against the shadows here, so... Yeah, let's just, uh, take a while we can. Better save those holy waters, even though we have a, you know, fairly decent stockpile, but... Hey, you never know. No, oh, never mind. Seems I was using it anyway. Delicious. But yeah, once again, to talk about Dante's uh, appearance in Devil Trigger. Love the way it looks in Devil May Cry 1. Looks very... Uh, demonic and very stylish, actually, which <laughs> makes me saddened that the design from 3 onwards became standardized because, uh, it wasn't very good. It looked kind of generic as fuck. Uh, that's just my opinion, really. I suppose as we are continuing to do this whole fighting the shadows, uh, sugar me do, really. Oh shit, I forgot what trivia I had. Thank Nomino. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if nothing else, I could probably just, uh, Find some trivia, quickly. Yes, time is running out, as that music is uh, talking about. I think I was going to talk about... Uh, actually, no, the Devil Trigger was right, actually, because I finally remember my tangent, which wasn't uh, trivia-related, but more just sort of a question I had. But, uh, yeah, the Devil Trigger in and of itself, the concept of uh, where it came from, actually. Yeah, uh, you might be no uh, noticing some familiarities towards the fact that, again, what Devil Trigger is meant to do is meant to make Dante uh, stronger, faster, and... You know, in Devil May Cry terms, it's meant to make him tap into his demonic power, but... Yeah. Kind of think back to uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica, actually, with, uh... Ooh, fuck. That would be a killer if you were in the red health, but, uh... Yeah. Think back to Albert Wesker in a Code Veronica, where, you know, he was able to pin Chris against the wall. And uh, in Code Veronica X, when he was able to do, you know, his wall-running Matrix shit. Yeah. Making him stronger, faster, more powerful. Yeah. And, uh, consider that Tony Redgrave was meant to be a protagonist who had supernatural abilities. So, I mean, it's likely that Devil Trigger was going to be a thing in Resident Evil 4. And, uh, again, in the... Uh, in the earlier story t context, it was meant to be that Tony Redgrave had also been injected with a progenitor virus, similar to what Wesker had, so... Yeah, I can only imagine wonders as to what sort of bosses we were going to face in-game itself, especially since we were confronting, uh... You know, Oswald Spencer himself. The head honcho of Umbrella, which... Again, I know a lot of people like Resident Evil 4 as we know it now, but it really makes me fucking saddened that we never got this version of Resident Evil 4 as Devil May Cry, which... Ugh. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the fact that, you know, in Resident Evil 4, as we know it now, we got the whole... Oh, Umbrella stock crashed, because all realism, it's funny. And then we have some completely unrelated James Bond shit with fucking Leon or whatever. Ugh. I mean, I said it before and I'll say it again. I mean, Resident Evil 4 is pretty much the game for people who aren't fans of Resident Evil. Which is notable, because I remember one person, I'm not going to name names here, but it was a certain popular internet critic who basically said, Oh, Resident Evil 4 was great because it ignored all the weird wackiness of Resident Evil plot, but then 5 brought it back and it was bad. I mean, what the fuck? Bad game. Whatever. Internet reviewer. Shit. Whatever's. <sighs> but anyway, the shadow's on its last legs. As am I. Problemo! And that's pretty much all she wrote. We got our blue orb. And now we may finally continue on to greener pastures. We've danced the dance of the bloodthirsty dead. 
We did some dancing. We did some dining in the hell. And now it is time to leave. I suppose if I might as well can talk about anything else just to waste a little bit more time. I kind of like how... Uh, I don't want to say uh, childish, but kind of how... Uh, well, I guess for the lack of a better phrase, kind of like when uh, R-rated movies got Saturday morning uh, cartoon series. Like, uh, you know, if you had like, oh no, it's uh, Robocop, the animated series, which if you saw the original movie, was most certainly not for fucking children. Uh, you know, just the fact that, you know, Dante refers to things like, uh, you know, the underworld uh, in lieu of hell, or... Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, they don't use any of the more choice curse words, like, I mean, they're not gonna say fuck shit or whatever, the, you know, the Devil May Cry reboot caught a lot of heat for, apparently. You know, they'll just say hell or damn or whatever else. I don't know, just that bizarre sort of censorship that's just, uh, quite odd, but it's also quite endearing, really, which, uh... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. In the, in the day when, like, our rate of progress used to get Saturday morning TV series, Devil May Cry, the Saturday morning cartoon series. Watch Dante as he attacks evil monsters. Can't say demons on American television. And uh, he would have had a wacky sidekick, which, or whatever else, or, you know, a little brat tagging along, which wouldn't be too far off given Patty Lowell's appearance in the Devil May Cry anime, so... Yeah, stay my tongue on that. Anyway, this is Luminate. A torch that'll help you see in the dark. But yeah, more of deep darkness and, uh, man, I can't get enough of this theme. Until the fetishes come and ruin it. There we go, this is what you get for your penance. Bravo! Absolute! Oh, stylish ranking denied. There we go. Lay the smack down. Absolute- oh, stylish ranking. You deny me! But yeah, there are pretty much two doorways that we need to use the shield in order to unlock. Uh, one of which is a mandatory pathway that we're taking right here. Uh, the second of which, however, is, uh, well, for an optional weapon that you can potentially miss. Uh, much like the rifle in Silent Hill 1, but, uh... Yeah, it is important that you give a thorough exploration to both these areas, because the weapon you get here is actually quite useful, if very costly, to your Devil Trigger. Oh, and uh, by the way, for the longest time, I used to think that holy water was an urn that I just couldn't break, but, uh... No, the holy water does actually have a physical model in-game, it's just that, uh... I mean, it doesn't quite look as detailed as what it looks like in the pre-rendered menu, so, uh... You know, just gotta be careful here. Oh, Sin Scythes. Don't worry, we got a shotgun. dun 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 dun, dun. <sighs> See, I can do it there, but not with fucking... The whole, oh no, you gotta do it in Secret Mission 1, but somehow you fail, even though you can do it easily when you're not recording yourself, and... <sighs> Whatever. Still just bitter that my whole Secret Mission thing completely fucked up. Oh man, if Albert Wesker was here, then he'd be able to recharge his T-Virus powers, and then Krith Rootfield would never stop him. Yeah, but uh, basically what that's talking about with the whole uh, connecting magical powers to the Skywalk... Well, later connotations, and uh, it's also referring to a little thing that we actually acquired not too long ago. Such as the Staff of Hermes, mon! <gasps> I was shot! By a menu screen! I mean, actually, to kind of talk about Scully Review's trivia here, I was actually... Uh, one of the gags that I... Uh, that I ended up cutting out for... Actually, I can't remember why I cut it out, actually, but, uh, yeah, I was initially gonna have, like, one of, one of the trademark Scully death scenes, you know, <laughs> that I used to do back in the day, uh, by having, like, a, uh, I think it was either Ebony or Ivory or the shotgun shoot me, and that's how I ended up dying in that review. Uh, I can't remember why I cut it out. I really should have reinstated it, actually, but I think I cut it out because, uh, I don't know, I suppose I potentially found the whole Moondas striking me down for making fun of him funnier, but... Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe the brevity of uh, th the other trick that I had planned would have been better. Whatever, I'm second-guessing myself, but hey, that's just a little bit of Scully Reviews trivia. Uh, you know, for those of you who are just paying attention to the end of the series, as Dante does his little revolver ocelot gun twirly thing. Yeah, so uh, apparently even touching the side of these sharp pointy poles hurts you. Funny, even though the pointy end should be the only thing that actually hurts Dante, but whatever. Oh, the fetishes. 
What is your fetish here, Mr. Fetish? Is it to kill Dante? That you want Dante to die? There we go. You know, it's funny, it's just the sort of simple pleasures of just blasting an enemy like this, but I never get fucking tired of it. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Uh, nothing. It's, it's just kind of amazing, really, how one game mechanic, uh, a bug from Onimusha, no less, was the precipice for Devil May Cry getting a lot of its identity from. Uh, Sin Size. Don't really know why we're getting introduced to them right now, but, uh, okay. I mean, we were already introduced to them much earlier on if we remember the courtyard with the the pride of the lion when we first fought the shadow. Yeah, but yeah, anyway, uh, using media didn't work, so uh, basically we're just gonna shoot him down round and round, spin your partner like a clown. It's not how any of that goes, but whatever. We're taking care of business. Yeah, in terms of any other enemies uh, you can face around at this point, uh, yeah, there is also a giant... Uh, a much larger variant of the Blades, which is uh, the red in coloration, so uh, yeah, Red Hunter, watch out. But yeah, that uh, just sort of goes to show you what enemies you'll be facing if, uh, you know, you enter and exit a room, really. But all the same though, well, the Death Size are pretty much- well, Death Size, no, the Sin Size are much easier to deal with here than the, the Sin Scissors, because they don't block your shit as easily, so again, you can pretty much just get right up into their grill, shotgun blast them in the face, and mm -mm. Dante has another delicious trophy to hang up on his cluttered office with pizza, beer, and uh, a pool table. That also changed design several times because... Ugh, whatever. Uh, basically, Devil May Cry 3 is the problem here. It remained consistent in Devil May Cry 1 and 2, and, uh, yeah, then everything just sort of went a bit topsy-turvy. I don't know. Maybe Dante just has an extreme love of fucking office renovation. In any case, though, as we head off to collect our next prize and continue fighting the enemies and killing everyone. Yeah, we already have what we need with uh, the lances that open the parts of the Colosseum, but uh, in the meantime, though, as we continue to collect our prize with the light through there, that's the uppercut. Yeah, might as well talk about uh, another wee bit of trivia. Namely, that Devil May Cry, you know, being a passion project by Hideki Kamiya. In this game specifically, and by god, it fucking shows compared to a lot of the other projects that he's worked on. He did take a lot of risks with this one, you know, hence the esoteric influence, and I guess uh, the way in which a lot of the game was designed, you know, not just being combat focused, but just sort of focusing on very, you know, sort of atmospheric kind of stuff, but also the game's difficulty, because, uh, yeah, Devil May Cry 1 does have a fairly meaty, I'm not gonna say it's the hardest game ever made, but it does have a fairly meaty difficulty curve that, you know, does require the player to sort of, uh, you know, think on their feet and, uh, you know, sort of adapt to the challenges that face them, and... You know, I mean, good on the man. He ended up making a really great game. Shame he couldn't have done that for a lot of the other action game projects he went on to make later with Platinum Games as their work for hire studio and uh, Bayonetta in some instances, despite that game having a few accolades of itself, but it's neither here nor there in that case, but either way, I mean, it does kind of go to show you that, uh, you know, sometimes when you roll dice and take risks, it's not always going to work out, but, uh, you know, when it does work, it can lead to very lucrative gains. But anyway, as we power up... And yeah, I think it's pretty much the same here. Sacrifices become magical powers, blah blah blah, Skydance. Uh, uh, Skywalk, sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much there to hint about things to come. In any case, now we have our little platforms here. No darkness miasma to worry about this time. And now we get our next weapon. The Nightmare Beta. It's funny, actually, I seem to recall in a, I think it was Resident Evil Remake, there was actually a cut weapon which was like a laser pistol or something. I mean, it was going to be a bonus weapon you get after a first playthrough, but, uh, yeah. Do you have to wonder if it maybe might have been based on the Nightmare Battle that we get here? But yeah, anyway, this utilizes Devil Trigger Power, so... It does require a bit of a charge-up time, so... <sighs> Come on. There we go. Look at that! Near instant stylish ranking and- Oh man, look at how far we can go! Yeah, even if you charge up with the Nightmare Beta just a little bit, you get multiple uh, ricocheting shots that get to shoot everybody every which way and sideways, and look at that! Delicious stylish ranking! Ready for you! 
Oh, man, that is some tasty treats to play with. But again, I mean, as you uh, saw right there, the caveat to using the Nightmare Beta is that it consumes a lot of Devil Trigger power, so... Yeah, uh, depending on how much you prefer utilizing Dante's devilish abilities, well, yeah, pick your poison. I will say, though, uh, we are going to be getting some great use out of the Nightmare Beta, and it is a pretty good, uh... I mean, I guess depending on your, your strategy in terms of uh, what you plan on doing, really. You know, I mean, if you want to attack the enemies head-on and uh, just sort of utilize it to your heart's content, feel free. I'd say uh, the Nightmare Beta is pretty much the ultimate combo if you're utilizing Super Dante, which is something that you unlock after completing the Dante Must Die mode. And, uh, yeah, you get Infinite Devil Trigger, and it was shamefully used by Mr. Keegan Stormblade, who... Yes, had a little cheaty playthrough of Devil May Cry. Mm, yes, I'm judging him for that. Always. Even though it came back to bite me in the ass by the fact that uh, Karma deigned it so that I couldn't complete the secret mission, but whatever. I can still laugh at him. I do some laughing, and some dancing, and some dining with the fetishes. Oh, stylish ranking, you are my Jesus juice. Oh. Where is the fetish? It is gone. But then I remembered, it's actually upstairs, so... Yeah, you know, I was thinking about the other room, where it was located next to the <laughs> Statue of Time. But yeah, uh, what you're seeing right there with that little flame addition to Dante's uh, effort ability is Rolling Blaze. Basically, you get to hurt people by utilizing, well, your jump attack. Oh, media level 2. Tasty, tasty treats. Ah! Oh, by the way, it is, it is actually also quite utilize, uh, utilizing. No, it's useful in utilizing against the, uh, you know, the Death Size and Death Scissors. Uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Just jumping. <laughs> A simple, not even, an, not even basically an attack in this game was enough to take out the, <laughs> the Death or since uh, Sin Size. Jesus, I gotta remember my fucking terminology. Yeah, I mean, it can be a bit imprecise given the nature of jump controls in this game, but... Uh, I don't know, I just find the fact that Dante simply jumping up and giving him a cuddle is just enough to... Well, take out these demons, I mean... What does that say about the Son of Sparta? He lives to give, and he gives pain. Anyway, the decoration resembling two knights. Shields and lances that lead to the battleground. And the, the path is clear for us to rule. What? I don't know, whatever, angsty, whatever. But anyway, this is what was being referred to earlier. A sacrifice required to the path of the Skywalk. So is this here, the Skywalk? And uh, yeah, if you want to, you know, soak up some tasty orbs, uh, get them now while you can, because otherwise, well... Yeah, would you win for another boss fight? Perhaps? The final encounter with an old friend. Ah, tasty orbs. I can feel your essence. Yeah, but there's not really too much to explore here anywhere else. There are no more items, so uh, let's head into the center ring. In this corner, weighing 125 pounds. What a fat fuck. This is Dante Sparta Esquire, and in this corner, flying in is... Griffon! Now let's fight. Now, uh, compared to some- well, okay, uh, probably not compared to some of the other battles, but yeah, Griffin is gonna remain mostly airborne for this battle, so, uh, it is in your best interest to, once again, stick to range attacks for the time being, because, uh, well, it won't be until a little bit later where we can finally take him down to size in more ways than one. Uh, especially for those of you who've played Devil May Cry 5, where he certainly does get taken down to size. But yeah, all the same, he's pretty much just gonna stay up in the air, you know, utilizing his advantages to his best abilities, and, uh, yeah, by the way, those uh, little red uh, circlets uh, that are sort of hovering around, they won't actually hurt you, they're pretty much there to be platforms for you to stand on, really, so, uh, yeah. Not that it's really going to be uh, useful to any extent anyway, because, you know, Griffin's airborne, and, you know, he also utilizes his lightning abilities to sort of take you down right then and there, so, yeah. Uh, not really too much to say in this aspect, but, 
Yeah, just uh, stick to ranged attacks. Don't really know why I was really giving him the runaround, but oh no, the Skywalk. It is doomed. Oh, that poor Resident Evil beastie. Yeah, basically now his wings have been clipped. Well, one wing has been clipped anyway. And now he's pretty much stuck on the ground. You might think that this intentionally weakens Griffin, and uh, that is part and parcel of the point, but uh... Yeah, now you're gonna be seeing why, uh... You know, his master Mundus doesn't really take kindly to people who feel him. And uh, especially if they're being outclassed by his enemies. But yeah, this is where the Nightmare Beta comes in really handy. A stylish ranking against Griffin. Oh, how tasty. Oh, round trip. Tasty. Yeah, I don't really have too much to say about it at this stage. Uh, he does also have his whole little, uh, old, uh, fire walls of lightning at you, which you have to sort of navigate to and fro, so, uh... Yeah, a very basic sort of attack patterns uh, shouldn't give you too much trouble. He says this as hell as an orange at the, t at the time of playing the game, but... Yeah, uh, Griffin, really fun boss fight. I'd, I'd say definitely is one of the highlights of uh, the game, really, but... Yeah. It's just really fun, and also a great uh, a boss fight theme to go with it. Uh, Grilled Smoke Tandoori, as I think it's on the soundtrack. Asami Ueda, Deep Darkness. Oh, fucking great mu music, man. I, I know I'm really just sort of gushing at this stage, rather than giving any sort of informative uh, stratagems against uh, Griffin, really, but... Well, Nightmare Beta. Even with just my paltry one shot. Look at that stylish ranking. Uh, yeah. Everything is pretty good, dude. Anyway, let's finish this. He's getting too wounded. Griffin. Griffolino, my man. You can't fight with that wound. Bravo, Dante. And now cutscene. It was too easy for you. Mundus. His heinous ways make me sick, killing even his own, like there were nothing. He's the one that took the life of my mother, my brother, sure. My mother used to always tell me that my father was a man who fought for me. He had courage and a righteous heart. In the name of my father, I will kill Mundus. Very well put, Dante. Wise words, and uh, once again proving that Devil May Cry 1 Dante is the best Dante. But alas, that's neither here nor there in this case, and uh, yeah, that was the sacrifice required for the Skywalk, so... I don't know, either Mundus was fulfilling the requirements uh, that he set up for the Colosseum right here, or, well... I don't know, I guess he just found it as a convenient excuse for him to punish Griffin, really. 
But anyway, this is the Wheel of Destiny! And now that we've acquired that, we can continue onwards. To the beginning land. I wonder what that means. But yeah, it's basically saying, uh, again, if you could remember the bit earlier on in the game, to turn back around, go back to the castle, and, uh, well, we'll just see what that entails for us next time. So, on that note, I am Solid Skelly, keep a new metal, and, uh, yeah, very beefy part, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did, despite my rambles here and there, so, uh, keep your dudes and dudes, uh, chillax, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye